guys welcome back to another video tutorial today we hang on i'm gonna wear my shirt it's kind of cold tonight okay today we are going to talk about baby freeze or should i say i will talk about baby freeze. and of course a tutorial and example moves for you to achieve this particular trick as you can see here it is very versatile you can use it as a change of pace towards your sequence or maybe an isometric hold throughout a particular strength hold session or maybe just for the sake of the beauty of it I mean it looks pretty dope I am not gonna lie there are misconceptions there are um, misinterpreted techniques that result in a weak and not only imbalance baby freeze but result in an injury towards your shoulder towards your elbows dislocation and maybe just the imbalance of conditioning and training to master that trick result in weaklings and this is where you need to limit that by learning the proper technique you avoid yourself from getting injuries from busting your elbow maybe busting your shoulder wrong way scraping the top of your shoulder during this trick not only it gives you a well um, maintained safety but it preserves you to be able to do this trick more further in the future now there are different types of baby freeze some of them um, comes with a small motion some of them comes with a big and spreading type leg some of them comes with a slide of rotation or a pivot towards the movement but in the essence, you are basically putting yourself a teeter-totter type of position where you need to balance your upper body while at the same time elevate your lower body. Um, in a way, it may look a little bit slant to the head part of the body, of the, of the area of the body, but technically, um, when you do let's say a more movement based baby freeze it is elevated to a sense that it is at the same level so your legs will spread to maintain a balance towards the body that creates an elevation on your head and that's where the baby freeze become very impressive when you're able to just maintain a balance between these transitions and these static holds. Now the best way to execute this move mostly comes from a crouching or a slightly bent knee movement that limits the um, impact that your shoulders and your elbow should bear instead of jumping towards it. Even dropping baby freeze needs some precautions. Check this out. I'll do a spin and a stop in the middle and I drop it down. But even then it takes a lot of time for me to condition that shoulder to be able to absorb that impact. Now let's watch that one more time. Now take a look at this. The baby freeze is also a somewhat progression to the handstand. It complements each other. And by then, training it one after the other would result you in greater benefit. Step one. First of all, what you have to do is to make sure you understand which hand that you should pick the strongest hand whether it's the left or the right pick your strongest hand and after that take a position and put your elbow on your hip or as near to your hip as you can some people have longer torsos like me for example i put slightly upper but it's as close as i possibly can to my hips now make sure you connect that elbow to your hip and drop your hand down straight on the ground 45 degree angle towards your shoulder not too wide not too small and put the other hand in front of your face as comfortable as you can now watch this as I lift my leg the weight of my body absorbs or let's say transfers to the side of my face yes you might have a scrape here and there but don't worry sticks and stones you'll get it right and now watch the other side as I put my elbows towards my hip, I maintain a position. Do not rotate your hand up, rotate your hand backwards because it um, protects you from falling backwards towards your butt. So you can 
teeter totter your body forward and backwards in the comfortable position. Now, if you feel like you're not strong enough and you can't hold that position long enough, don't worry. Everybody comes from this position, everybody comes from this particular um, lack of strength, even I did. So, 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 I have a conditioning technique that you can use to gain your strength towards it. Stand in a pike position with all fours and watch your back. Don't arch it, keep it inwards straight and activate your core, lock your shoulders and as you bend down, put your hips on the elbows and lift your leg up. Not too high but just enough to give you pressure to add in towards your strength. Right? Some people may feel a little bit of a pain doing this movement. That's probably because your shoulder position is not correct. It's too front, too protracted. You have to retract it back and pull it down with your shoulder blades. Now get used to this habit by applying it to your push-up. Remember, retract your shoulders, pull them with the shoulder blades down, don't flare up your traps, and tighten your core back straight, do not arch, and drop down to your push-up. Hold maybe five or six seconds and then explode up. This will increase your strength and increase your chances to gain more ability and uh, stability towards your baby freeze. Remember to retract your shoulders, Put yourself in a strong plank position and push up. Now this one is a secondary push-up training where you can train your shoulders to be able to absorb the wankiness or the movement when you hold a baby freeze. Now this push-up to the side plank prepares you for this imbalanced motion. Do 100 of it, you're gonna do great. Now when all this has been trained and you still wanna progress, there is another training simply doing the same pike push-up but lifting the leg that you would um, drop as in your hips side of it so lift it up like a doggy peeing and then drop your hips towards your elbows and do it in repetition while slightly trying to lift the other leg towards a full-on baby freeze remember to engage your core engage your core suck it in Suck it and activate it. This, this is where you get most of your balance in this movement. It is definitely a great core exercise, but what you have to maintain here is the proper motion and position of your shoulder. Drop it down and retract your shoulders back. Don't shrug your traps. Whoop, uh, dog alert. Pretty baby, passing through. Hello. Okay, back to business. Now, your leg position matters too. You cannot be a pasta putanesca here <laughs> in the sense that close those legs. Not too wide, not too small, but close them in a sense that it is not rocking your balance out of, out of, um, out of position. Now, when you start to look like more of a baby freeze, straighten the front leg and try to titter totter with the hind legs. Remember to keep them closed. Now remember also the position of your arm matters. You cannot put it too wide or you cannot put it too narrow. It has to be in a position that makes you comfortable. Now to put your head on the ground but not make it a main source of foundation. To get used to it, you can apply it anyhow you want really. From a fast motion to a static hold motion or from a fast pace to a slow motion pace where you want to emphasize on the form of the movement baby freeze really adds up to the points baby freeze creates a certain notion that you have control towards your body you have a well understanding of your balance and not only it gives you a sense of um, awareness towards where your hand and how your strength is developing but it makes you a better mover maybe some of you are into the um, body movement culture those type of things the baby freeze or the kid at the range in capoeira is a very much somewhat expert a little bit to the intermediate but it is an impressive move to do thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoy this hope you learned thing for two from this um, I hope this gives you confidence to be able to actually learn it. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the notice button and follow me on Instagram 
I'll see you soon for the next tutorial.